Hey guys, it's Coffee and Curiosity. I'm Jen. And I'm George. And today we're going to be talking to you about Carol Baskin. So come on, grab your coffee, and listen along. Today I'm drinking Caramel Swirl Duncan's Ice Coffee. How about you, George? What are you drinking today? I'm drinking uh, Ice Mocha Swirl. Mmm, Mocha Swirl, pretty good. Sounds good, all right. So we're going to be talking about Carol Baskins from the Big Cat Rescue. And don't forget your fireball you're drinking, too. Notice you didn't mention that, eh? Oh, yeah, a little bit of fireball. (laughs) So, Carol Baskin, guys. Big Cat Rescue. So, a lot of you probably already know the whole Tiger King Carol Baskin story. She was featured on the famous Tiger King docuseries on Netflix. Carol and Joe were going back and forth with each other, and Joe ends up getting arrested for murder for hire, along with a few other charges. When it really should have been Carol behind bars. Should it have been? Mm, Allegedly. (laughs) So, yeah, that show started during the beginning of the pandemic. Then last night, we start watching the show on the ID channel. It's a three-episode series called Joe Exotic, Tigers, Lies, and cover, Cover-Ups. And it follows the whole Carol Baskin, Don Lewis story. Yeah, and while watching uh, this show, we happened to learn a lot of new stuff that we didn't really know before just from watching Tiger King. So we thought it was pretty cool and interesting. Yeah, so we're just going to give you our thoughts on this and... Get a little deep into it. Yeah, I figured we'd uh, give you our reaction to watching this newer show and um, wanted to hear what you guys thought as well. Yeah, let us know. Also, if you're listening, we'd appreciate it if you followed us. Or if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to try to subscribe. Subscribe, guys. All right, so a lot of you probably know about Carol's husband from the docuseries, Don Lewis. He goes missing in 1997. There's a lot of speculation on what happened to him because he went back and forth from Costa Rica a lot. He had property there. Some believe that he decided to go there and just disappear purposely. And some people believe he went there and was killed, possibly by the cartel. And some people believe that Carol either had him killed or she killed him herself or possibly had a tiger do the job. And uh, Carol said that she thought that uh, Don had another uh, mistress or girlfriend out in Costa Rica as well. Oh, yeah. She said uh, he had multiple mistresses, I believe. Yeah, and she was always wondering what he was doing there, spending his time in Costa Rica. Well, whatever happened, the body still hasn't been found to this day. Yeah, very mysterious. (laughs) And this series gave some new information about it that I found pretty intriguing. And the series that we watched focused around a detective, Jim Raffman, who volunteered his time uh, to investigate further into the missing case of Don Lewis. Yeah, so he gives a lot of his time to this case and he wants to get to the bottom of what happened to Don. Yeah, and they um, they show that uh, Don Lewis is... Uh, First family had a uh, memorial for him after he was missing for so long, and uh, the detective Jim Raffman went to that and kind of talked to his family a little bit. So he's also working with them as well, keeping in touch with them. Yeah. So, what did you find interesting so in the beginning of this? Um, I found it interesting just to see, like, basically how uh. Joe kind of uh, opened up the doors and like got a lot of people really uh, stirring the pot with thinking that Carol really might have did something to Don and maybe Don uh, did get murdered and things like that. I thought that was kind of interesting, you know, and um, he kind of brought up some some good points like that Carol killed her husband and how he mysteriously disappeared and she ended up with everything. And I think that got a lot of people all around the world who watched the Tiger King show, like really interested in what really happened to Carol's husband. 
So it was interesting to see this detective uh, volunteer his time and go around and question people uh, that Don knew and um, do some research into it more and, and kind of hear like what he thought in, in his opinions. Oh, yeah, that's right. Joe Exotic's the one who got people looking back into this whole Carol case. He's the one who was going back and forth on his little web series. Yeah, his show he created. And I think at first people might have just thought he was throwing that accusation out there at Carol. But then as that show continued on... Um, it was a Netflix show that really got people watching. Yeah, and, and as that continued on and, and more people watched it, I think they took it more serious and actually did some of their own research and, and did think it was kind of weird how Carol's husband, Don, just, you know, seemed to disappear. And, and then she was left with everything. And um, that was kind of ironic, considering especially that... Uh, Don was uh, supposedly planning on divorcing Carol, too, as well. So, Yeah, before this Tiger King came out, this case was over. But now that this shed more light onto her, detectives opened back up the case. That must have Carol a little worried or annoyed or upset. Yeah, I would definitely think, especially because some of the things that we heard in the show um, with a detective talking to people now... Um, I would definitely think Carol has like a lawyer lined up or, um, I know, uh, it was said in the show that she, she did want a lot of her own cases herself and did a lot of her own research and actually didn't hire lawyers. But I would think now she might be a little more concerned and possibly thinking about hiring someone or something. Cause there's, there's a lot of accusations flying around and it doesn't look good for her at all, especially with this new show coming out. Yeah, this new show. Well, I think it came out about maybe six months, a year ago by now. So, maybe six months. I'm not sure exactly when it first came out, but... Yeah, some I knew, but new to us anyways. Yeah, it didn't look too good for... Her. Um, and what I found interesting is that uh, Don's first wife said that he gave her an envelope, and it said, if I ever go missing, open this. And it was um, his restraining order that he had that was declined against Carol. Yeah, I thought that was um that was uh like a key piece of information and um really interesting to know that uh Don's first wife Gladys got this envelope and um I think Don I think it was like said in the show that Don went over there like maybe the day before he disappeared or sometime like really close to when he disappeared and handed this envelope to Gladys and, like, said, if anything happens to me, open this. And uh, it was revealed that he actually uh, requested to have a restraining order against Carol. And um, it was denied. Um, and within that restraining order that they showed, it said that uh, he was afraid for his life, that uh, Carol said she was going to kill Don uh, if he came back to the house. And uh, it said she was really mad and um, that she threatened him. Yeah, she had a gun, and she hid his gun. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, good point. She had also, like, taken one of his guns, and um, he was basically saying, she's familiar with my gun. So he's basically, like, saying he's scared. But um, it was kind of weird that uh, his request got denied for the restraining order that uh, Don requested. Another thing I thought was um, interesting in the show was that the lawyer uh, who was working on it basically said that um, this guy was, you know, like Don wasn't one to really go to the police a lot and uh, reach out for help and stuff. And he said that in all of his like 30 years of working in this field, he's never seen a man request a restraining order from a woman. So that just goes to show you that Don must have been really frightened for his life and really scared of Carol and really wanted to essentially get rid of her and, and not really have that much communication with her anymore. So, um, yeah, and, and I wonder why uh, it got denied anyways. I wonder why the judge or whoever decided to deny it denied it, you know? Yeah, I wonder. That's I was going to say that too. I never heard of a guy getting a restraining order against a lady before. Yeah, that's um that's a unique situation I think for uh in most cases and um he must have been really scared. Yeah, he he must have been really scared. Carol must have really uh said or did something that scared the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah, uh what also was kind of interesting is uh, his whole will or power of attorney letter. Oh, yeah, that was kind of like the icing on the cake. Uh, that was really 
crazy situation there. Yeah, it says, in case of my disappearance, basically Carol gets everything. Yeah, that's like a huge uh, bomb being dropped, like, in case of my disappearance. Like, who who words the, who words their will or whatever like that? My disappearance. You, it's just not normal. Yeah, it seems kind of odd and pretty convenient for Carol. Yeah, how convenient is that? He goes disappearing and then all of a sudden... It's she's in charge with these papers that say in case of my disappearance, give everything to Carol. That just sounds absurd. And I would think that more like people would look into that. More people would question that and and realize like that wording just seems way too convenient to help assist Carol. And it's just not like you wouldn't think someone writing that when they're sitting down thinking of, okay, in case of emergency or if something happens, let me just write in case of my disappearance like that just I don't even think that happens that much I mean that just doesn't sound right it doesn't sit right it just sounds crazy yeah most people don't really uh I wouldn't think when they're writing a will would put in case of my disappearance I think it would be more likely that they put in case of my death or in case of an emergency most yeah. people don't expect to go disappearing yeah, that's not like, that's not, that's like so, such a rare and unexpected thing to happen. I don't think he'd be trying to prepare in case of his disappearance, you know? Yeah, there's a couple of possible reasons why that would be put in the document. It could be because maybe he plans on disappearing and he wants Carol to get everything when this happens. Or maybe Carol is the one who made him disappear and forged the documents. Yeah, I think the second option is probably, like, the most likely. I don't, I don't know. I just can't picture someone writing in case of my disappearance. It sounds so, like, out there. To, <laughs> it just sounds so out there to me. And they also said that they had two experts, uh, signature experts, say that it looks like these documents were forged. Yeah, that was interesting to see on the show the uh, special signature specialist and expert guy um, said that the signatures looked too identical to to be like accurate and true and it looked like it was traced from the marriage license. Yeah, he says <coughs> that uh, you don't usually see two identical signatures but Don's were basically identical which is almost impossible to repeat and uh he goes back and looks at all these other signatures that he made to compare them, and then he finds the marriage one, and uh, it's pretty much identical to the marriage one. Yeah. So you know Carol had access to the marriage document, so she could have been tracing it. Yeah, and, and after he analyzed uh, Don's signatures from differing years, he said that um, most likely it was probably that whoever traced it traced it from the marriage license because it was like basically an exact match to the signature on the will uh, or power of attorney and um that's that's quite interesting i wonder if they can do anything further with that in court or or you know his his other family can uh try to use that evidence against carol somehow you know yeah i'm surprised they didn't look more into this when the disappearance first happened it kind of just seemed like everything went well for carol yeah it, it definitely seemed like i mean because some because how some of this stuff is coming out and like i mean i know now it's like 20 what 23 24 years later so like maybe there's new techniques or whatever that can be used um maybe back then they weren't really into looking at signature experts who knows but it does seem like they kind of didn't really research too much into don disappearing you know yeah it kind of seems like they're just like oh he went missing. He liked to fly plane, so he probably dropped off, crashed, maybe went to Costa Rica, got murdered. So, well, doesn't seem like Carol would do this. Actually, one of the jurors in Joe Exotic's case said that something along the lines, he was in the show and he said something along the lines, uh, well, Carol seemed like a nice lady. Why wouldn't you believe her? That seems like a crazy thing for a juror to say. Yeah, it seemed like he was, like, being totally, like, biased, like, towards, like, Joe's case or whatever and just saying, oh, well, she seems like a, a nice lady. So, like, he's basically saying, like, why wouldn't you believe Carol? But 
I mean, you can't just believe her because she seems like a nice lady. There's like, plenty of psychopaths that are nice. Yeah, you gotta follow the facts. I mean, <laughs> that seemed that did seem kind of like crazy how he was just like basically, you know, oh, you just gotta believe her. Yeah, I was kind of shocked hearing that. Oh, she seemed like a nice lady. Why wouldn't you believe her? And we believed her. Yeah, that uh, that would be scary if that was one of a uh, jury member in your case. Yeah, just believing like what someone says just because they seem nice or they seem anyone can seem you never met this lady in your life how do you know how she seems yeah she could be totally different could just be the one day in court she decides to shine like a star and seem like the perfect person you know another thing that they kind of um talked about throughout the show that we watched was how uh carol was like very like smart and uh well like thought out and um how if anyone could have planned something like this she very well could have been that person um basically leaving no evidence behind of don's like supposed murder or uh you know disappearance um so i think carol seems to fit that kind of uh profile there yeah another thing they talked about in this show that they didn't mention the tiger king is uh (coughs) carol's boyfriend i think it was after don went missing him and his son moved in with Carol and the son just said how cold she was. He wasn't allowed on her side of the house and there was certain rooms he was only allowed in. He couldn't go nowhere near her and the husband or the boyfriend, his father was basically okay with that. That was pretty weird. As a father, you you would just let your girlfriend decide where your kid could go and be rude to him. Yeah, I thought that was kind of a a fucked up situation myself. Um, The son explained Carol as like, you know, being really like standoffish and um, not too welcoming towards him, not nice. Uh, He wasn't allowed to go on in certain parts of the house, basically just his room where he was designated to to be at and spend his time in the bathroom. And that's really it. And uh, his dad explained that Carol, uh, even if she was in the same room with the son or whatever, uh, she would not say a word to him and and basically, you know, not be nice to him. And and it was obvious that she didn't want him there at all. Um, And they basically explained how she seemed very, like, not empathetic or empathetic to people and uh, cold and... um, Unempathetic. Unempathetic towards them and uh, like very cold and, and distanced, distanced herself from them. And um, yeah, the husband even said that uh, she's not a people person. She don't like people. She likes cats. Yeah, she likes the cats better than the people. And they even kind of um touched on her relationship with uh, her daughter, her own daughter from her first marriage, and said that they kind of have a um unique, weird relationship, odd relationship as well. Yeah, and um. The daughter lives on the property in a different house and her and Carol aren't very like close or like, you know, emotionally like connected or anything like that. So the the boyfriend said basically she works for Carol and that's all the connection they have. Yeah. And he said it was one of the weirdest like situations of a parent and a child or, you know, he's ever seen. Um, And that guy seemed kind of interesting, too, because when he was asked if he thought Carol could have did this, he he said at first I was like 99% sure no, but now I'm 50-50 because of the will. So that was interesting. Yeah, that will got really got people thinking, wondering. It seems a little strange. Yeah, I mean, it it, it definitely seems like way too uh, coincidental that it just happened to say in case of my disappearance. And um, another thing like to be touched on is how Carol, uh, Carol Baskin said, oh, well, if, uh, the family is gonna, uh, basically, like, disname me in the public or say, treat me bad or say this about me, uh, I was gonna give you 10% of everything or of some stuff, but now I'm not going to, um, and he, she said that, uh, Don didn't want his greedy kids to have anything, which was, uh, weird because the mechanic guy who was close to Don said that he loves spending time with his kids and stuff like that. So I, I, I don't personally think Don would have just left everything to Carol considering he wanted a, a restraining order against her and he was somebody had asked his uh, close friend who was a lawyer who would be a good di- divorce attorney. Um, it seemed like he was trying to get away from Carol so I don't think he would have just left her everything and left his kids and his first wife absolutely nothing. Yeah, the mechanic who worked on his car right before he disappeared said 
his van said that uh he doesn't believe the whole he wanted to go disappear in Costa Rica part because he loved spending time with his kids. He he admitted that, yeah, he loved Costa Rica and loved being there, but there's no way he would just disappear completely because he loved spending time with his kids and his everything. So I don't think he would say to Carol, make sure none of my greedy kids get anything. Yeah, that just seemed like something Carol threw out there to make the public believe that... Uh, his family or his kids were just after his money and that Don didn't want to leave anything to them. But that doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't add up when you talk to his friends who knew him and stuff just doesn't seem right. And, um, the other thing that was interesting was how the mechanic was basically discussing, uh, Don's car when it got brought back to, uh, Carol's house. Um, the, the cops released it to her and they, how they only found one of his fingerprints inside on the dash, but none of Carol's and no other of his. So somebody have had to clean that car off. Yeah. Cause Carol's the one who she said she drove him to the airport and, uh, who was weird about that is the detectives went and did all the fingerprinting and they didn't find any of her fingerprints on it. All they found was one fingerprint of the mechanics on the car. And uh, he said, the mechanic said, well, my fingerprint should have been all over it because uh, I was just working on it the day before. And no, 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 nobody else's prints were found on it. So that seems a little odd. Yeah, that's a uh, Carol. Apparently. It's like Carol cleaned it up. Yeah, Car- the, the cops released the van back to Carol and Carol drove it to her house. And then they came and uh, investigated it like three days later or something like that so carol had all the time in the world to clean that thing off and do whatever she wanted to do take any evidence out if she did do something and that that seems impossible that the only fingerprint that they would find was the mechanics on one fingerprint inside on the dash of the car when his he even claimed his fingerprint should have been everywhere on the outside on the other side and the inside on the hood all over the steering wheel and all over the dash the door handles and as well as carol's because she drove it so her should have been on the steering wheel and everything and he, you know, he even said, like, well, the, why aren't hers? That they should have been on there as well as mine in many more places. And they, he said that the uh, investigators kind of just, like, uh, agreed and left. And he never heard anything else about that after that. So that's definitely odd and, and impossible for them only to find his one fingerprint. So somebody had to have cleaned that thing thoroughly. Yeah, and uh, the airport that Carol allegedly dropped him off at, she says she dropped him off at, one of his close friends who uh, sold him airplanes in the past said that Don would never fly an airplane again after his third accident. He didn't fly in a year or two or something like that. And also he claimed that he would never go back to that that um, airport because that him and the owner of the place had a fallen out and he sold one of Don's planes on him and Don got really upset about it and... He said Don would never go back there. That that just wasn't who he was. He would never work with that guy or go back to his airport again. Yeah, uh, they had a falling out because he sold his plane for a lot less than than what Don wanted for it. So so I think they kind of severed ties after that. Yeah. So he said there's no way that she would have dropped him off at that airport because all of his planes were out of that place and he would never go back there. Yeah, it was uh, that was a little bizarre that um that's the first time that we're hearing about that is just in that show you know yeah a lot of new information in this show that we didn't hear before and it's really interesting to see these guys work on this case because if you're asking me i think she's guilty yeah she i mean there's definitely a lot of things pointing towards carol as not seeming right especially that will uh being traced um and just, you know, just a lot of things don't seem sit right, I'm sure, with a lot of people. Uh, another uh, interesting aspect of this um, investigation that we watched here was uh, how Carol's boyfriend uh, that she had for two years after Don went missing, um, he found out that his name was used to sell property um, that Don had owned in Costa Rica that Carol had sold and didn't even tell him she was using his name but she used his name and I think that just goes to show how she like methodically uh plans things out and like strategically does things for her benefit um and not being caught in doing things 
And I don't even know if Carol was ever really officially questioned on why she used his name to, to sell that property. But, um, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting just to show how, like, Carol really is and thinks she does. Yeah, the guy said, I didn't even realize for a while later that she used my name to sell the properties. Yeah, he said he, like, someone questioned him about it, like, a long time later. And he's like, what the hell? No, I, I don't have anything in Costa Rica. And... And so, I mean, maybe Carol used his name so it wouldn't seem obvious that she was the one selling off Don's stuff, you know? Yeah, it's it's really looking bad for Carol if you watch this series because there's just so much evidence that seems like it goes against her. But maybe we're just getting one side of the story from the series. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. From what we've witnessed, it definitely seems like the evidence is stacking up against Carol, and there's some things that she uh, she needs to explain here because they're not se- seeming right. Then we got Mr. Uh, Kenny Farr. Yeah, Kenny Farr. First time we heard his name. Yeah, he's the handyman that worked for Don, and the day Don went missing, he actually showed up to church with Carol. Yeah, that's very strange because uh, people who uh, knew them reported that Don and Carol would go together. All of a sudden, Don's missing. Now Carol's showing up to church with her handyman. And it's known like that Carol's really not that nice. And um, so why would she be... She doesn't like people. Why is she going with the handyman? Yeah, why would she be attending church with the handyman, who she really probably didn't even have a relationship with at all? Like... Yeah, we didn't hear about this guy in the Tiger King either, so this is a new suspect on their list. Yeah, a new lead, and um, the information that we found out about Kenny Farr while watching the detective do research uh, seems to be that he should be, or he is probably, like, now the prime suspect. There's a lot that came out uh, regarding Kenny Farr. Yeah, this shows that Carol, after Don went missing, Carol sold him three properties of Don's for nine thousand dollars that were worth a lot more yeah they were uh hugely income generating um properties and she sold uh i think it was like three properties she sold them each to him for a couple thousand dollars so like each was totally it came to a total of like eight or nine thousand dollars and each month they would generate a ton of money um and carol's not the you know it was known she wasn't really the nicest person so why would she all of a sudden give this guy her handyman Kenny Farr, these properties and these income producing properties, like I, I can't see her being that like empathetic towards someone feeling bad for them and wanting to help them out. That just doesn't seem like Carol. So definitely seems like there's motive behind giving him that. Maybe I thought my first impression was um, if he did help her do something to Don, Carol probably knew because she seems smart and looks into things that if she just gave Kenny a, a, a load of money and he just had it in his bank all of a sudden well obviously they're going to look into that and be like well why do you have all this money in your account all of a sudden but if she's able to give him something where he can collect his money slowly but surely each month then and has a viable way to explain how he's obtaining all this money then there you go and there's really no proof that he did anything so that seemed pretty planned out and sick yeah that's a good point instead of giving him cash here here's some properties make some money yeah, and he can get his money that way, and then there'd be, like, no no huge lump, lump sum of cash traced back to Carol given to him at one time, which would obviously indicate he did something for her worth a ton of money. Yeah, her she wouldn't even allow her boyfriend's son in the same room with her, but he was given the, she's given the handyman properties for nothing. Yeah, definitely not seeming like the kind of person who would do something like that. That's very mysterious, and I definitely think that Carol should be questioned about that as long along with uh Kenny Farr and but but before that um more interestingly I thought it was interesting how um one day uh Kenny Farr the handyman went back to his house and uh his wife witnessed that he he had all these uh guns in his trunk uh which happened to be Don's and he told her Don's not coming back just don't say anything 
Yeah, he made it very clear, his ex-wife said. He's selling the guns or something. And yeah, he's like, Don's missing. Don't talk about Don. Don't bring Don up. Don't mention him. If anyone asks, don't say anything. So obviously right there, he's hiding something. And why would this man, his handyman, Don's handyman, be coming home with his gun collection? Of And, and, and uh, his ex-wife said there was multiple guns there. I mean, it's just, it's just not, like you know, it's just not something that happens. And uh, she searches in his pockets one day after that and finds that ticket that's to the local auction house that he sold a meat grinder to the auction house. Yeah, and this was um, not long after Don went missing. Um, so that's very suspicious in itself. Like, why are they selling their meat grinder to the auction? Seems like something Carol would want to do to get it out of there. So any there could be no chance of it leading back to Don at all. And um, the ex-wife actually, like, she seemed to be really the key person here to release a lot of the comments and information about regarding Kenny Farr and um, how he was so freaked out about her talking about Don missing, not to mention him, how he came back with his guns, um, how he seemed to answer his phone abruptly that day. She said that uh, he went missing and also how uh, when she told Kenny that she was leaving him, um, he basically, uh, like, attacked her and got violent with her and said, like, you're not leaving me or you'll end up, uh, in the meat grinder like Don did or something. And that was, like, mind-blowing. And the detective even was like, whoa, this is a bombshell here. Yeah, is she just a mad ex-wife or did this really happen? Yeah, and then she said that she found that ticket, uh, for the sale for the auction for the meat grinder, I mean, everything seem, seeming to add up and make sense. Um, and she could just be a mad ex-wife trying to get him in trouble or trying to frame him or whatever. I mean, it does happen a lot, but I don't know. She seemed kind of credible, and it does seem like something Carol would have said to do, definitely to get the meat grinder out of there if they did happen to use that. So n- none of that could have linked back to them. It would have been totally gone and off the premises. Yeah, and the detective even went to that auction house and seeing if they could find records on that meat grinder. But the guy, he even the guy who still ran the place, said he knew Don. Don was always there selling and buying things, trying to make a dollar. But he said, unfortunately, they don't. Their records don't go back to 1997. Yeah, he said that. Uh... Don seemed Don was always a nice guy and like kept his word. He was he was trustworthy and he was always trying to make a dollar selling this and that here and there, whatever he could. But the records only went back seven years, so that was unfortunate because um it would have been great to be able to see if that was uh true and um if the ex wife was credible. Uh, I wish there was more they could do to find out if that's true because some of the things she said, I mean, it it, it kind of aligned up with what seems like could have happened and she seemed credible somewhat you know yeah i wish we could get more information on that to see how credible she is also i want an explanation from carol on why she why she gave kenny those properties yeah that definitely um raises many red flags i'm sure for many people across the board carol doesn't seem like someone who would just give up that much money to handyman I'm sure she didn't really have any kind of relationship with him. Don was the one who had the relationship with him. And and also, like, how she showed up to, to church with this handyman, that's uh, a little bizarre in itself, too, when Don was missing. I mean, that, I think her friend or whoever talked on the show even thought that was a little bizarre and weird, you know? Yeah, the whole thing's weird, especially how even in written reports that Don was afraid of Carol, he he had in writing that, she was going to kill him he was afraid she was going to kill him and it just seems really weird i in that show too carol said how she was like don always told her she was his guardian angel but i don't think he would be saying that if he was so afraid of her yeah it definitely seemed like somewhere in their marriage uh things started to take a turn for the worse and uh, Don started to see Carol for maybe who she really was and how evil she, she really was. And if things weren't going to go her way, she wasn't going to get a divorce and, and lose all the cats and lose everything. So she uh, seemed like she definitely had to do what she had to do. And um, another interesting thing was that they showed that uh, some lady that does research online, a web sleuth or whatever, 
um, was going over the note that was online that Carol supposedly wrote to Don's first wife, Gladys. And within that, like, I think they said it was like some crazy, like long detailed 11 page note. Within that note, Carol had stated that um, if she didn't get away from her first husband, she would have killed him. Oh, yeah. She said something along those lines of if she wasn't away from her first husband, she would have killed him. Because she felt threatened or something. Yeah, so, I mean, that kind of goes to show where her mindset's at. She seems like someone who doesn't really joke around like that and definitely probably would have taken that action. I mean. And it showed in the podcast, or on the show, that she had a podcast where she answered to that question. And she's kind of laughed it off saying, yeah, well, I would have had to do that if he if he was coming after me or something, trying to kill me. Of course I would have had to do that. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, It did show that. It it showed that Carol tries to justify that letter and things that it said to people um, in the videos, the short videos she uh, makes. And she definitely just seemed like she was just trying to throw anything out there and seeing what would stick with people to try to justify for saying that. Um, But no, I mean, it kind of seems like Carol definitely had something to do with it. And, And like, you know, the show revealed and and the detective said that Carol was the one with the the most to lose and the most to gain if Don was gone, so. Yeah, I wonder where this investigation is at today. Are they still pursuing it? I hope they are. Yeah, I was thinking that too after the show ended. And I really think like the bombshell that, that came out is uh, about Kenny Farr. And I think his ex-wife seemed to be like the most uh, revealing of new information and and led us to Kenny Farr and she definitely seemed like a key player here in uh, exposing what really happened and there's also a hundred thousand dollar award given by some anonymous person for people to step forward if they know anything and stuff Um, and I'm thinking maybe that might entice some people to come forward to try to collect that reward maybe uh, Kenny Farr's ex-wife will come forward with more information Kind of made you wonder, though, like, everything she said, and she basically suspected him. I mean, she more or less essentially said he did it, just by everything she said, how she said he reacted, how he was nervous, how he had done stuff, how he received properties, how he said she'll end up, end up in the meat grinder just like Don did. Um, I mean, that's pretty telling right there, so we definitely need to find more out about that. Also on that show, at the very end, the guy actually tries to meet up with Kenny Farr. He pulls up to him in his driveway or something, and Kenny wouldn't talk to him at all. He said, uh, are you the police? I'm not talking. I'm not talking to you. Yeah, he, uh, you know, there's all kind of reasons that maybe someone doesn't want to just openly talk to someone who's recording them and asking them these kinds of personal questions, you know. If they're not guilty, maybe they feel like if they answer something, it might make them look guilty or whatever you may have it but on the other hand if he's not guilty it's kind of weird he wouldn't just want to answer some questions and help out in the investigation of don lewis so yeah i also found it to be kind of a good idea what the detective said is that uh maybe offer kenny far immunity say all right we'll give you immunity if you tell us what happens maybe that's on the table you know yeah um that was that was I thought that was a pretty cool thing that they came up with um, offering people. Uh, they said, uh, you know, the detective working on the case and other lawyers that are trying to help come people come forward with information to solve in the case basically said, like any cases or any um, any things on the table, including immunity for people who step forward with, with information leading to what happened to the death of. Uh, Don Lewis, so now there's this $100,000 reward out there along with uh, a lot of deals that look like would be possibly able to be made, and including immunity, so why would people not step forward at this point? Maybe there's something in the works right now, you never know. Yeah, that would be interesting and good to know, and it's just kind of funny how, like, everything seems to have worked out for Carol exactly the way she wanted it. She was even featured on, like, Dancing with the Stars, and all this stuff. Meanwhile, she seems to be really a cold, calculating person. And yeah, I mean, there's no proof that she did this, but a lot of things are pointing to her. And I don't think that there's been enough investigation into her. Yeah, hopefully we get some more details and 
hopefully this case gets solved. I do think there's a good chance that Carol's guilty and the one behind his disappearance. Yeah, it definitely seems like when Carol found out Don wanted to get a divorce and that uh, he most likely wasn't going to leave her uh, much or if anything, especially he wanted to take his cat and go to Costa Rica basically and she didn't want to lose those cats and probably go back to the life that she had before. She seemed like she stepped into high gear and started making her plan and carrying it out. Yeah, well, we're going to see what happens with this. Maybe we'll talk about this a little more another time. Um, also want to say that we actually reached out to Joe Exotic. We're hoping to hear back from him. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool when we hear back from him. We'll definitely uh, fill you guys in and let you know how he's doing, what he's up to, and if uh, Team Tiger is still working on getting him out, even though he didn't get that pardon. Yeah, we asked him about that pardon, too, and... I don't think he's happy that he missed out on that. He didn't seem happy. He tweeted about it. Yeah, he was uh, really sure it was happening. I'm sure he's disappointed it didn't happen. <laughs> oh, he's definitely disappointed. And never from this. <laughs> well, hopefully we get more information on Joe. Hopefully we get more information on Carol. And I hear there's a Tiger, two, or a Tiger King 2 coming out on Netflix soon, but it's produced by somebody else. Yeah, uh, new producers, and I also heard that Carol doesn't want to take part in it, and she's also, from what I read, upset that the way the Netflix documentary portrayed her, and it, she said it was kind of misleading, and she said it was basically like a circus, and she shouldn't have been involved in that. It, Joe's actually trying to get people to realize he's telling his team to let everybody know that there's new producers that are trying to make him look worse. So, And they're paying people to give interviews and stuff like that. I think maybe possibly Carol's just upset that it opened Pandora's box for her about Don Lewis. Yeah, and I know a lot of people don't like Joe after all this because his animal abuse things, but I really think they didn't have much evidence, good enough evidence to put him away for the murder for hire. I think there was enough reasonable doubt for him to miss out on the murder for hire. The animal abuse charges are one thing, but I don't think he deserves 22 years for the murder for hire. Yeah, it definitely seemed like he got totally set up into that one, and uh, a lot of people are in agreement that 22 years is, like, insane. Uh, Murderers get For less. his charges, yeah, definitely. Um, so even if he didn't get a pardon, uh, maybe Team Tiger can work to get in his... Uh, sentence uh down a little bit somewhat for him so he's not gonna basically die in jail and in this series we watched it shows that carol actually might have been in contact with what's his name again jeff jeff Lowe, yeah before he, he uh before joe signed the zoo over to him so maybe carol had a hand in all this yeah, and, and um, that would just go to show, again, how, like, methodically planned out and manipulative Carol can be, if that's true. And uh, the detectives was saying that there there is some credibility to thinking that Carol and Jeff knew each other b prior to Jeff uh, basically saying to Joe, I'll give you this money, you sign it over to me, yada, yada, yada. It seems like it all could have been a manipulated plan by Carol. Yeah, and we'll talk about this more on another podcast uh more Joe Exotic yeah. specific one. I think that would be good and interesting. The people want to know about this. They're pretty interested. And in, uh, we're actually interested in what you guys think about Carol Baskin and the Don Lewis situation. So let us know in our email. Or on Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter at Curious Coffee PC. Or send us a message on, on our email at CoffeeCuriosityPod at gmail.com don't forget to follow us subscribe on twitter send us messages we want to hear from you yeah we like to get your input guys let us know thanks have a good one bye bye <laughs>